Hey, welcome back, folks. So I keep getting messaged about young warrior poets who are wanting to go over to the Ukraine and help because they see the stuff that's going on and they want to be able to pitch in. And right off the cuff, I love the impulse. I love that they want to be able to protect uh, and uh, they're willing to sacrifice and that's a courageous move. However, I responded to one man in particular, and I wanted to be able to kind of send that response out because I thought it was important for all of you guys. And this whole conversation gelled with some recent news that I've received from James Yeager. James is a friend. He's a, a peer in the industry, industry, a tactical trainer. He's who got me on YouTube. And so love this man. You may not like him because he insulted your 1911 or said some off collar comment. And I get that all the time. However, James Yeager has decided to join the Ukrainian Foreign Legion and head over to the Ukraine to fight. And so I wanted to be able to discuss this live with him. And this is uh, especially, um, you know, a, a kind of a tough uh, interview because James has recently found out that he is terminal. He is dying of ALS uh, or Lou Gehrig's disease. And so wanted to talk with him directly about his decision to go to the Ukraine and should other folks pitch in as well. So uh, James, my friend, welcome. Yeah, thanks. I mean, uh, just before, before we jump into any of that, can you kind of give folks that know you and love you a little bit of a update on your health and, and your kind of uh, journey? Well, I'm between three neurologists right now, and I have not gotten a uh, definitive um, 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 diagnosis. Um, and so I can't, in all good conscience, say that I have ALS. However, my father died of ALS and I have the exact same symptoms happening in the exact same order that he had. So personally, I feel I have ALS. Right. Well, uh, love you, brother. Uh, that, that's awful. Me and my wife just today just wept in our kitchen uh, for you, but just preparing for this. And getting Stop. Into this. So, well, Stop. Hey, I, hey, I'm a friend. No, I get no. to say whatever I want. I get to feel what I, I want. want. I, get to, I don't care. I, I love you, and that's it, bro. Oh, so, okay, but listen, it, let me yeah. say my piece. I have led a wonderful life, and um, so I don't want sympathy. I mean, I want, I, I want people to appreciate the fact of what's going on, Yeah. but I'm saying, like, um, like I have lived a good life. I mean, when I look back at what I've done, I've lived a complete lifetime in my 51 years. There are people that live to be 101 that haven't done, accomplished as much as I have. And, and furthermore, I had 50 healthy, strong years. There are people that are born with diseases all the time and that never have a good life. So who am I? to feel sorry for myself when I've been given this wonderful gift that I've had I've, until this, nothing ever, no broken bones, nothing. And I, I feel that, that I've been lucky and I have no, I don't feel sorry for myself. Awesome. Well, love you, man. And uh, certainly respectable. Uh, you have announced that you are joining the Ukrainian Foreign Legion, correct? I have uh, sent my application and documentation to the email for the uh, Minister of Defense, I think, the Minister of Defense, and I am waiting the response, but I'm packing my gear. Got it. So. I had uh, multiple people reach out that saying, hey, I want to go over. I've got another old ranger buddy who has already got on a plane and is, is presumably there now. And so I'm just processing my feelings about it. And, uh, you know, my immediate uh, response is like, man, really think about this. And, and I, I want you to be able to respond. But first off, let me just kind of say my piece. One is I know uh, Russia, a very old enemy, is not just engaged in a physical war against the Ukraine and Belarus, uh, but they have a full out on uh, high scale propaganda war going on as well. The Ukraine as well, no stranger to all kinds of dirty corruption is also engaged not only in a physical war of defense, but they're engaged in a humongous propaganda war as well. And so they're churning out propaganda as well. 
the U.S. is also a very evil power. So there's three evil powers going on here, Russia, Ukraine, and the United States as well. And we've got our own propaganda going on as well. And so what my fear is, is that we would go over there, not be able to really contribute in a huge way because you don't speak the language. And then if I was, when I just kind of turn on my cold, heartless strategist mindset and I was commanding Ukraine forces, I would immediately want to take James Yeager and whoever else, whatever, you know, Americans I could, put them into a kill box, make sure they die and make sure I can make a poetic, beautiful story of your death. And then that becomes part of my propaganda machine, in which case now, I can move hearts and minds in America and pull the U.S. into a war to defend me. You would be a sacrificial pawn uh, on the altar of a bigger propaganda game that we never would really even understand. Uh, and so I, I was hoping that you would kind of answer for your piece, but then also answer for there, because you have a special situation going on here. And so it is different. So, well, Here's my thing. Uh, everything you said is potentially true. Okay, so I don't I don't uh, disagree with any point you've made. My thing is, um, they need people to train their civilians, and that's what I do. And uh, I mean, like I've trained, and even though I don't speak the language. I've trained Zulus, I've trained Hungarians, I've trained Panamanians, I've trained Arabs. I can get past the language barriers. I only have to learn a few words, head, <laughs> brain, and heart, and how to count to 10. I can teach you class. Um, so there's that. As far as being a pawn, when have we not been pawns? And there's that. So the thing is, um, I have been charmed. I have literally been, my wife didn't know if I had nine lives or if I was invincible. I've T-boned cars and went over them on my motorcycle. I've been in car wrecks, towed out cars as a cop. I, um, I've had bullets pass by my face so close I could feel the heat off the bullet. And uh, so... I think I have a time and place I'm supposed to die. Maybe that is in a bed wasting away from ALS. Or maybe that's in the Ukraine teaching some people how to fight. And uh, the thing is, is uh, I don't know, but people say when they talk about Christianity, they talk about being called, being called to preach or being called to do mission work. Like, I feel like I am supposed to be doing this, and I'm going to, if, okay. if given the opportunity. Uh, appreciate that. And by the way, just everyone watching, I, I have no, like, judgments on what you're doing, and I've got respect, and I'm like, I have no idea what I would do in your situation. I'm not in your situation. I would have to be there, and I wouldn't know. So I'm approaching you without judgment or, or, or anything uh, like that, but I, I am approaching you as a friend who loves you. Uh, just for some context of everyone uh, tuning in, how long do you think that you have to live? Here's the thing, time and money. We always know how much money we have. We never know how much time we have. Right. Uh, so if I was asking your doctor and uh -huh. I'm like, hey, uh, I mean, are we months? Are we years? How long does James have statistically reasonably? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, since they haven't given me a diagnosis, <laughs> they certainly haven't talked like that. But my father died of this. And in the order, tongue and you know mouth and throat, and then he started losing strength in his arms, I've lost at least 25% as much as 50% of the strength in my arms and my legs are fine. I just walked to shot show, you know, eight, eight miles a day at shot show. My legs are still strong, but I get muscle tremors in my arms. And I feel like that's the, the motor neurons, you know, dying. And now it has started happening in my legs. So probably 
by the end of this year or the first quarter of next year, I'll probably confine to a wheelchair. And then after that, then the, the, the trunk, that's when those muscles quit working and you quit breathing. And uh, so I don't know what the answer to your question is. My father died because he wouldn't use a walker. He tried using a cane, died and cracked a skull. Uh, but if I had if I had to guess, I would say I have two, I have about a year of being upright, moving around, and I have about two to live. So um, for those, uh, you know, folks, their whole life ahead of them, you know, that they're young, 20-something, and they want to go join up and, and fight and kind of answer a call, I would... I would wonder what, in light of the propaganda machine and all that's happening, and I'd say, hey, man, we don't know a lot right now. We're going to know more later. And I have a feeling that all kinds of hell is going to be breaking loose in the next five years. And who knows? I mean, there's going to be opportunities to serve the greater good coming on. The right. point and here, I though, is it to prove that, hey, look, see, I'm courageous. I'm ready to, there's there's a bunch of nitwits right now in the comments that are just basically saying, hey, if you're not willing to go right now, then you're a coward. Uh, yeah, like, no. like, these are the same kind of things of like, if you don't jump out of an airplane without a parachute, then you're a coward. I'm like, you're a moron. The goal is to make your life count and your death count. And no one, none of us are going to make it out of this life alive. I've had right. my close brushes with death. Um, and uh, I, I don't know when when it will be my time, and I don't know how I'll meet that in, but I, I do hope that my life and death count. What would you counsel these younger guys with? Here's what I would counsel them. I have um, 88,000 alumni, and plus all my YouTube people. I haven't asked a single person to go with me. That's what I think. Got it. Yeah, yeah, got it. <laughs> I haven't said. I haven't said join up. I haven't said go. I haven't said let's make a team, guys. Jump in here. Let's do this. Not once. I said I'm going, and um, and I I I don't encourage anyone to ever do anything based on peer pressure ever. To put something plainly, would you rather die with a rifle in your hands? or a little bit later with a wheelchair under you? Well, I believe <laughs> that my time of death is fixed and the manner of death is fixed. And um, kind of like the when when Arabs say, Muslims say, inshallah, inshallah, the, the, if it's God's will, if it's Christ's will. I, I believe that if I'm supposed to die in a wheelchair or a mortar attack in Ukraine, that that is fixed. And um, so um, I want to look back at a life well lived. Kind of, the, kind of the hell of ALS is my brain will be intact, mm. and so, but my body will quit. So I'll be locked in this prison of my mind, and I want to be able to look back. So... Um you know, I, I immediately think of, man, uh, what are kids and grandkids and wife, you know, of like, you're going overseas to do some good, uh, but they probably are going like, hey, you could do some good here, albeit in a wheelchair. I, I mean, what do you say to that? I mean, that, that would be that would be a real struggle. Um, um. Not for me. I mean, I am. Um, I mean, I won't. Um, sorry. I want them to remember me like this. Sorry. Nope. I want them to remember me like this, not some 85-pound 
skin wrap skeleton. I mean, I, I, I get it. I just not don't really have anything to, I don't know what to say. Well, to again, say. I think, I think my time of death is fixed. And at least if I'm going to be shoveled up on wheelchair, I go, well, I got that last, got that last one in. It did, did one more. And, you know, to, to be able to look back at my accomplishments, like, again, I'll be trapped in here. I want to go, man, I used every bit of that body for a cutting. Um, what do you think in now? I mean, it's, uh, certainly allows you to look back. I bet you're looking back a lot. You're looking now, you're realizing the clock is doing this and, um, kind of what, what are you thinking in, in here? Like, uh, how are you seeing the past, present and future differently? Um, I don't think I am. I, um, like, um, I really don't like, um, I, I feel good about my whole life. Um, like I, I don't, I don't lie to people. I don't wrong put people. I don't have a bunch of people I need to apologize to before I die or anything like that. There's a few people that, that, um, that I don't want to die hating. So I wish they'd kill herself. But other than that, <laughs> I'll just so, die hating them. I hear all that. However, um, I do think you owe me an apology. You made a, uh, uh, a video on 50 reasons John Lovell was wrong. And I, <laughs> I, a team of independent fact checkers led and <laughs> led by me found out that it was just pure lies. And I was actually, <laughs> completely honest and you're a liar and so i i thought now would be a good time for you to publicly apologize so you have the floor okay it was actually 52 things you son of a <laughs> ah <laughs> go to the end just treating me terribly huh it's that's amazing. how it's gonna be it's amazing how many people watch that video and don't understand that we're sitting beside each other and we're friends. <laughs> like, I can't believe you said that to him. He's talking either way, back or forth. I'm like, yeah, some of those near gunshot things, that, that was me just having a bad shooting day. <laughs> no, I think it's funny. Like, like when me and you were hanging out, like, you're like, hey, I think this way's best. Well, let's arm wrestle and figure this out, you know. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm thinking that's a good idea. Let's let's uh, let, in a, in about a year, let's arm wrestle this out and let's <laughs> right. That, now it would be good too, I think. Uh, <laughs> now now you're down to my strength. You lost fifty percent, and you're down be, to my strength be, now. Be be an even match. Such a punk. Such a punk, <laughs> brother. Uh, I love you. Uh, appreciate you. Your huge contribution to my life. Appreciate you. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep hanging out until. Uh, that's yeah. It. So uh, I'm trying not to Jesus you to death uh, on uh, camera in front of everybody. We've had a lot of those <laughs> chats online and offline. And I you haven't care. heard the end of me. You, you may just die of irritation from me. And that may be <laughs> that may be how it goes down. <laughs> So uh, my, my last words are probably going to be, get him out of here. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I love to, Hey, a lot of people w would love to be able to support you. Uh, what, what, anything we can do, what, what can folks do for you? I, 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 I don't know. Like if it, um, I don't, I don't know. Right. And if something comes up, I'll tell people. All right. Sounds good. Hey, love to you and your family. Thanks so much for tuning in. And hey, all you guys, memento mori, right? Uh, yeah, uh, love you. Train hard, uh, train smart, and your responsibility to prepare for the fight never ends. Did I, <laughs> that's my new tagline. What do you think, James? I like it. <laughs> <laughs>
You got any final thought? You good to go? I'm good. Guys, stay free. Later.